Um, yes, yes, fine. Come on, single thread, single thread. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Single thread performance, okay. A bit faster, a bit faster. Come on, come on. Oh, man. Hey guys, Hardware Hound here. So you might be wondering if that, oh man, was good or bad. Well, I'm gonna be a little bit of a jerk and I'm not gonna tell you until we get to the testing. So yeah, you're just gonna have to sit through the whole video and wait unless you skip ahead. But if you skip ahead, there'll be a special curse and you will never get a really good bend overclocking chip again. No, I'm just kidding guys. I won't actually curse you, but today is the big day. This is when AMD releases their first lineup of Ryzen chips. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a preview of the Ryzen 7 X or 1800X. The X comes after the 1800, not before, but in the chipset, the X comes before the 370, not after. That's not confusing at all. But no, this is this is the big day. This is where everybody, everybody's been holding their breath, waiting to see what's happening. I have a lot of work to do on the full review, but I wanted to at least get a preview. I wanted to sh at least show you guys something on launch day because I finally can. And well, I did the best I could. So I threw a quick system together. Um, thankfully, Rosewell had sent me a case to review, although, <laughs> fun story um, they they wanted uh, to send a little bit different revision on that so but I had this one and they told me do what you want so I took this Bradley and I threw a Ryzen system and I tell you what this case was really good so we've got everything here it's a little rough and this is definitely not gonna be my final testing bench system but I got a few re few bench tests I'm gonna give those to you I'm also, but before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about experience and then we'll wrap this guy up pretty quick and then save it the rest for the review later. Okay, guys, I know, I know. What's, what's that single thread performance? Is it good? Is it? Yeah, I, I get it. Okay, just, just, just patience. P-A-T-I-E-N-C-E. -E, patience. We are going to get there in just a second. But before I do, I want to talk a little bit about experience. Now, you're probably like, what the heck, experience, I don't care, numbers. You know, sometimes you can't show experience in just numbers. Sometimes there's just a feel there. Now that said, I'm going to do everything I can to show numbers behind my experience. But, because I, I, I don't like just having a feel, I like to try to prove that feeling. But right now, I didn't have enough time. So I want to talk a little bit about what's going on. For starters, putting everything together. You know, we've got... We've got the pins, we've got the traditional AMD socket, even though we've got more pins, but everything about the CPU and the socket felt really sturdy. In fact, everything about the motherboard felt really sturdy. I've got two Aorus boards, one for Intel and one for AMD. Basically, almost identical boards aside from that, and yet the Aorus is just a definite, the, the X370 board is definitely more sturdy. and. It could just be a design choice. It could be just pure coincidence. But it makes me wonder if AMD makes it more affordable with, with putting their chipsets and putting their hardware in there, if they found ways to do that so that the manufacturers can put more into quality and sturdiness and stuff. Possible? I don't know. But it's just a thought. And I definitely wanted to run it by you. Install. Wow, <laughs> install was great. So I slapped this guy in, I put two of my old 500, 500 gig, 7200 RPM drives in there. I kind of played around with maybe trying to set up a RAID, but the RAID was going to turn out to be more trouble than it was worth under this tight time crunch. And even then, what's a RAID 0 going to do compared to an SSD? So I ended up just going back to HCI, installing it. I go into my Eufy BIOS, disable CSM, and I'm, normally that's, that's kind of hit or miss. In fact, on one install recently, I had to enable CSM to get the install done. Then once I had a Eufy bootloader, I, like Windows Eufy boot manager, I was able to disable CSM and everything kept working just fine. But 
on this guy, no problems. Just bam, found my USB drive. I installed Windows and I'm up and running. And I was like, really? <laughs> First time? BIOS settings. Now, the BIOS was amazing. And you're probably like sitting there like, what? I know, of course, Gigabyte's got nice BIOS. I'm not talking about Gigabyte's BIOS, which is also really great. But AMD, I really feel like they put a ton of effort to give you all the settings you need and none of the settings you don't. I, th I, I don't know, I'm not in their heads and I might get some confirmation. They are slam busy answering everybody's questions and stuff, and I'm trying not to bug them too much. But if I didn't know any better, I would say their engineers said, how can we take every setting that doesn't really need to be controlled and build it into the CPU? So that only the settings that either stock users want to just be automatic are there and set and they don't have to worry about it. And the ones that overclockers want will be very easy to understand and they'll have exactly what they need. AMD still has a good number of voltage settings and that is kind of, kind of I think I'm gonna have to dig deeper into those, especially for overclocking experiments. But overall, just setting the settings was so simple. And then bam, I'm done and I'm set up and I've got the system going the way I wanted it to go. I was really impressed with that. That is experience, guys. That is what I'm talking about. I can't always quantitate that, but what I can do is say, hey, when my first experiences with this was nothing but joy and pleasure. And when I do a computer build, that's why. I do this because I love it, because when I step away, I'm like, I had fun. And I think Ryzen has that kind of person in mind. And I have a feeling if you're watching this video, you're that kind of person. So yeah, experience, great. All right, I know. Is there numbers? Okay, let's talk about some numbers. Okay guys, so I got my handy dandy little cheat sheet here because, well, I'm gonna just talk and rattle off some percentages. I'm going to overlay some screenshots of my test. I've got some various tests that I've got set up, so you're gonna see those as well. But if you wanna see multiple tests and all of them easily, I'm also writing an article about all of this. It's pretty much gonna cover everything I'm talking about, but I'm gonna have galleries of screenshots, especially when it came to CPU mark. I did like five tests each just to show a little bit of that, that range. So you can go to that link in the description below, pureoverclock.com, and they'll go actually right to that, read that preview article that I have, and you can see all the thumbnails and click them, make them larger, just go through those numbers. Let's talk, let's talk percentages. CPU mark. I decided I have, on the Intel side, obviously I'm a little behind. I do have a 7700K now, so I was able to compare to that. But I have been on an 8350 on my main system for, well, since 2012 when it released, basically. I actually built a system in October, November. So 8350 CPU mark, the entire CPU score, which is the multi-threaded everything, I had a 60% increase with the Ryzen 7 1800X. And I kept both chips at stock settings and 60%, that's pretty good. Now that being said, we're talking about eight cores and 16 threads versus just straight eight cores. And so maybe we're thinking we should have a full 100%, but I don't know that threads always translate to a full double performance in every circumstance. So yeah. With that said, 60%, pretty big number. The single thread performance was 35%. And you may be scratching your head and thinking 35%? I thought that we were supposed to have a 40% IPC gain, and I might have even saw that number that was like 50 some percent in actual performance. Hold on, we're getting there. So against the 7700K, I actually had a 30% increase on, on the entire CPU score of performance, which is great. For those of you who are big into editing, video, 3D, those kind of things that really take lean heavily on that, you're gonna see some, some really nice performance, some increased productivity, increased efficiency. There's no two ways about it. Now the single thread test came in at 20% below the 7700K. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that more in a second. Cinebench, multi, 100, and 60% increase over the 8350. Yeah, 
my video edits should be going a lot faster here soon. Um, might depend on VSDC supporting a little bit more, but yeah. Cinebench's single thread score, 60% e increase over to 8350. Remember, just both CPUs at stock. I didn't try to worry too much about matching clock for clock. I wanted to say, hey, you put the CPU in, you used automatic settings, what performance increase did you get? 60% on the single thread. Now, on, on the 7700K, the entire multi-threaded score, we had a 60% increase. And yeah, that speed was very noticeable. I mean, wow, that Cinebench benchmark just flew on the Ryzen 7 1800X. The single thread though, we came in another 20, again, 20% 20 behind the 7700K. Now remember, we're running 4.5 gigahertz on stock settings with that turbo, which on my chip just seems to run all four of them on that all the time. It's just the cooling or whatever. But, so some of that attributes to that, but the simple fact is, is we're still talking stock for stock, and stock for stock, 20% decrease. So, I'll get into that a little bit more. After that, I decided to throw one game that really relies heavily on single thread, because that has been kind of the Achilles heel of, of AMD. And especially in some of these games that you might play, like MOBAs and stuff, if their performance isn't up there, you're actually hurting your experience. You don't need top of the line, but you want something decent. I had a 30% increase on my, on my performance using an R9 290 over the 8350, which is a phenomenal single thread performance. That was great. Now against the 7700K though, I was actually about 30% behind that. So that's the first time you saw that single thread type performance really drop. Now there's one key feature, remember, remember guys, I was in a hurry. I'm running on a traditional hard drive and not my solid state drive. I gotta reformat my solid state drive when I go to this. So because I'm not quite able to do that, I had to work with what I had. I am gonna be really curious to see just how much of a performance increase and stuff that happens between the two. Because I've always felt like the biggest difference between a solid state and a, a regular hard drive was loading times. We'll get to see some legit performance there too. So yeah, a little bit behind on single thread, but overall, here's what I feel like I'm seeing. We're gonna see some trades where we're gonna see Intel having a clear lead. We're gonna see some trades. We're gonna see AMD having a clear trade. But do I think they lived up to their promise? Definitely, definitely. I really feel like we are seeing a chip that is actually performing on Haswell slash Broadwell performance on the Intel side, which is fine because Skylake and Kaby Lake on the single thread performance are kind of the kings. And I'm not upset that AMD is behind. In fact, I think when things are, are a little more optimized and some of the roughness is out, we're gonna probably be more realistically about 10 to 15, 10 to 20%, I would say would be the range of, of performance lag behind Skylake and Kaby Lake, while pretty much our Broadwell Haswell chips are gonna be on par with this guy, with this guy having a lot more multi-threaded capability with all those cores. So AMD, I think, has done a great job. That said, they also have done this at lower clock speeds and a crazy 95 watts power. How, how do they fit eight cores in that kind of performance at 95 watts? I do not know. So this has been a fantastic experience so far. Got a lot more testing to do though. This is just a preview, but I'm hoping I'm hoping that everything keeps following up in line with what I'm seeing. It looks like it's going to. I think, I think we're onto something big here. Okay guys, so Ryzen is, I think, a huge success. I do think AMD has delivered. And I'm gonna really, I'm really gonna dive into that in my review. I've already got a lot of thoughts. But to save time and not spoil too much, I'm not gonna go into it that much here. Also, you know, I need to verify more before I just really say it, but this is my initial impression. I am really happy. If anything, my expectations were a little too high. And so there's some things that didn't quite come, really just single thread performance didn't come as high in certain aspects as what I wanted. That said, I've got a traditional hard drive that could be hampering me, so I don't wanna say too solid, but once again, my expectations were really sky high there. That the experience is way making up for it, and there's just so many, there's some other things I'm really liking. 
I really love what I'm seeing. So that doesn't mean there isn't some rough spots though. I'm still seeing a little bit of software hitches. I feel like that we need some more optimization. I started playing around with overclocking and that was finicky at best right now. Um, I've been seeing some reports of people getting these overclocks and what, I'm, what I was seeing was a lot of voltage raising and nominal gains. Like it seems like at the it seems like at the stock settings were great, but then you try to go any higher and it's like there's just not enough voltage to do it. And at the same time I don't want to overload a chip right now. So there's there's some factors like that that you know we've got some rough spots and I think some of that is just optimization and stability. And so we're gonna see some of that improve. I think some of that is also new architecture and it's going to take some time for the process nodes and various things to catch up to start really making this better and better. AMD though, delivered. I really do think that they've delivered. Everything I'm seeing looks great, but I still have to do more testing. I want to verify, are they really showing it or is this just, just preliminary flukes right now? So there you go guys, preview look. Give me about, I would say, two, three weeks to start getting my first reviews of this up because I've got a lot of work I wanna do. I really wanna, I've got a lot of questions still in my mind I wanna answer that aren't answered yet. And I wanna make sure I answer those and understand this, I wanna see this big picture. Experience so far has been great though. I'm really happy. So I hope you like this video. I hope it's not too much of a tease. I'm really not trying to do that, guys. I just, I just want to give you a little bit of a preview. Reviews, full reviews, lots of benches, lots of testing. They are on their way. I'm going to work on them as fast as I possibly can. So like the video, subscribe to my channel if you want to. I will catch you later.